Right, welcome to this second part of this IGCSE Chemistry uh, Paper 2 warm-up uh, designed for the paper in the summer of 2017. Uh, so in this session we are going to look at some more questions on bonding, uh, particularly ionic bonding. We're going to look at electrolysis, we're going to look at some calculations and hopefully we'll also look at some condensation polarisation. So let's get started. Right, okay. Um, draw a cross and dot diagram to show the bonding in a nitrogen molecule. Now, a nitrogen molecule has the formula N2. Uh, and if you can find nitrogen in the periodic table, it is in group 5. Uh, that's over to the right hand side. So that tells you it's got 5 electrons in its outer shell. Now the outer shell would be full if it has 8 electrons. So each nitrogen atom in N2 needs to gain 3 electrons in order to make it full. So what happens is we form a triple covalent bond. The nitrogen atoms like that would overlap. Uh, we would form a triple bond, so you've got one pair there, one pair there. One pair there, and then each nitrogen originally had five electrons. So we have one, two, three, four, five crosses, and one, two, three, four, five dots. So each atom now has eight electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's full. One, two, three. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that one's full. So we've got full outer shells. And those shared pair of electrons in the middle here are held there because they're attracted between the two nuclei um, in the hydrogen molecule. So attracted to two nuclei. And the reason they're attracted to those two nuclei is the two nuclei are positive because they contain protons. And the electrons are obviously negative, so opposites attract. Now, the final part of this is a question which is asking for an empirical formula. So you should know that an empirical formula is the lowest ratio of uh, each atom or each type of atom. In a compound. So we've got nitrogen, hydrogen, phosphorus. Maybe I should be writing a little bit more, a little bit smaller, so I can try and squeeze this onto a page. Let's see how it goes. So we've got 28.2% nitrogen, 8.1% hydrogen, 20.8% phosphorus, and 42.9% oxygen. Now hopefully you should know that you now need to divide by the atomic mass. So you need to find the atomic mass on the periodic table, which is the smaller of the two numbers next to each element. So nitrogen is 14, hydrogen is 1, phosphorus 31, and oxygen is 16. And you work out those numbers on your calculator and you get 2.01, obviously 8.1, uh, 0.67, and 2.68. So that is the ratio within the um, compound, but it's not a very nice looking ratio. Let, we need to get it to whole numbers. So we divide each one by the smallest number, and the smallest number here is 0 0.67. So we'll divide each one by 0 0.67. Um, and that gives us 3, 12, 1, and 4. And then obviously we have to convert those numbers to um, a formula. So you've got N3H12PO4. And that's the uh, final part of that question. So let's go on. And this is a question about ionic bonding. And we know it's about ionic bonding 
because they've told us it's an ionic compound. But we should know it's an ionic compound between magnesium and fluorine because magnesium is a metal and fluorine is a non-metal. So you're going to get an ionic compound when you've got a metal and a non-metal reacting. And helpfully, they've drawn some nice diagrams here for us. So here we've got magnesium, which is in group 2 of the periodic table, hence two electrons, and fluorine here, group 7, because it's got seven electrons. And what happens when the magnesium reacts with the fluorine is that the magnesium, because it's a metal, Mg, uh, well, I wonder why that's not writing it. Here we go. Mg uh, loses two electrons. Now, those electrons, well, one of them is going to slide nicely across into the fluorine here. Okay, so the fluorine now becomes fluoride, which is negative. So we could say F gains one electron. And you might be thinking, well, where on earth does that other electron go? The other electron that we lost. Well, that means we need two fluorine atoms for our electrons to be housed in. So need two Fs, which each gain an electron. So if we were drawing a cross and dot diagram for um, magnesium fluoride, we'd have this fluorine up here um, is well on its way. We just need to show we've got two lots of them. And then the magnesium, well, we'd have to, we wouldn't have those in there. So we, I mean, there's no way I can sort of edit this to remove them. We'd have to get rid of those. And the magnesium has lost two electrons, which would mean it had a two plus charge. Because the electrons are negative, we remove two negatives, so what's left? Two plus. So the formula of each ion, well, we've got magnesium, two plus, and we've got F minus. And if we were asked for the formula of the compound, we're not, but they might ask you, it would be MgF2. Okay, because you need two fluorines to house the two electrons that each magnesium has lost. Okay, they might ask you, and they haven't, for what type of reaction it is when you lose two electrons. Well, that's an oxidation. And what type of reaction is it when you gain an electron? It's a reduction. Okay, onwards. So here we've got uh, a question on electrolysis, and we're using, well, surprisingly, solid lead bromide. And that should ring a few alarm bells. And you can see we've got lead bromide uh, written up here, and they've told us it's lead 2 bromide. So that tells us that lead has a 2 plus charge in here. So the non metallic element used for both electrodes, well, be nice and careful here. Um, because most people would say, ah, oh, it's graphite used for the electrodes, but I suppose, technically speaking, the element's name is carbon. Um, and the reason the lamp doesn't light is because, well, alarm bells, we've got solid lead bromide. Um, because what must happen for the lead bromide before the light will light? Uh, you have to melt the PBBR2. And that will work because the ions, therefore, are able to move between the electrodes and carry the electrons in the correct place. So we're forming two substances here. Uh, the silver liquid formed from lead bromide is in fact lead. And well, we've got to decide on which electrode the lead is going to be formed at. It's actually formed at the negative electrode. And that's because lead ions, like all metallic ions, are positive. So the positive ions are attracted to that negative electrode so you'll see some silver liquid forming here. Now the brown gas is in fact bromine and I can't write it on the bottom of my screen because I've got some icons there and the bromine is going to be found at the positive electrode. And you might be thinking, 
Hang on a minute, bromine is a reddish brown liquid. How come here it's a gas? Well, the reason for that is because in order to melt the lead bromide, we're going to have to use lots of heat and bromine evaporates really easily. Now, I thought it would be good to throw in a condensation polymerization question. Um, it's not been asked for years, uh, and this is quite an old question. It goes back to 2010, um, which to you probably, a pit, probably feels like a long time ago, uh, but to me it feels like it was only yesterday. Um, so, let's have a look. Now I'm trying to think about what kind of things happened in 2010. Uh, I, maybe it was lot. Maybe it's longer ago than I than I uh, care to remember. Um, no, no glorious moments stand out. Anyway, I digress. So, what type of polymer is nylon? And um, and we should all know that it's a condensation polymer. And it's called a condensation polymer because when you make the polymer. Uh, from its monomers, um, you produce the polymer and another small molecule. Now that molecule is often water. It's not always water. And in this reaction here, between these two, you don't get water. And that's because we've got this substance up here. Now usually you get a diacid with OH instead of the Cl. Now this is actually a diacid chloride. You don't need to know that. Um, but what happens is that the nitrogen and the carbon here form a new bond. And that forces the hydrogen and the chlorine here to form a new bond. And so we get rid of that bond there. We get rid of that one there. And that effectively is also what happens at the other end. But we bond that to another um, monomer, so we lose our chlorine there, and we bond that to another monomer, so we lose the hydrogen, so that hydrogen here would have gone with the Cl. So if I'm going to draw the repeat unit, and this is a really difficult question, um, you can see I'm going to copy it from the diagram above, uh, H, then we have a block, and H, and then C, double bond, O, circle, C double bond O, and that is actually the repeat unit. And what you might have spotted is that normally water is released, um, but in this one uh, we actually get hydrogen chloride released here. And as the question just says identify, we, we're actually okay to say either the name hydrogen chloride or we could say HCl. And that concludes the second uh, part of this uh, warm-up video. Uh, the final part will contain um, three uh, moles calculations.